Good afternoon, this is Schweitzer and this is a video uh, part of an acid base series on what is a titration and what are its uses. Okay, so first of all, a titration is not exclusive just to acid base. In fact, titrations are used all across different types of chemistry, um, and in fact, maybe even different types of science. But in this case, we're looking to see if we can match one thing to another thing. Quite often in science, I use the term in order to determine an unknown, I must have a known to compare. Now, in this situation, um, we're going to be comparing moles. Moles is the equal, equal item that we're going to compare one item to another. So, for this, I always write our little table like this, and I call it a known unknown table. And this can work for lots of things that we're comparing a common entity for. But for the terms of acid base are concerned, let's imagine, um, I'm going to just show a quick little example and then I'll talk about other things we can do with it. So let's just say, for example, I have an unknown concentration of a base or an acid. It could be either one. So in the beaker we have uh, here, I have hydroxides present. And I don't know how many are there. I'm just going to drop in figuratively some hydroxides. And the cations are there, but they're just spectators. So inside this beaker here, we have, let's say, 20 milliliters of an unknown concentration. So at this point, the concentration of the hydroxide ion is unknown. I do know I have 20 milliliters of it. Above, I have a burette. Now, a burette is a tube with a valve on it. The valve is located right here. And a few things you should note about the valve is that any valve that, if it's in line with the, with the burette, it's open. If it is perpendicular to the tube or burette, it's closed. This is going to be true for pretty much any valve, gas valves, water valves, of course unless the handle is a circle and that doesn't work too well, but uh, in industry gas valves and things of that nature, we can look at it and know whether it's open. So a couple things here, um, we're going to be trying to match the moles inside this thing is a known concentration of, in this case, an acid. I'm going to go H plus ions. So that means I know the concentration. Let's say it's 0.1 molar. Okay. So inside this thing, there is a certain amount of H plus ions that are floating around. Okay. So I'm going to drop in this, these guys, and because we're dealing with the solutions, I use the molarity formula pretty exclusively on this. I want to match moles of my known and I want it to match that to the moles of my unknown. Known unknown. Now you'll notice that as I drop these in one H plus ion reacts with one hydroxide ion to produce one water molecule. You might see that written differently if you write the H plus ion as an actual water molecule as it actually is. H O plus ion plus a hydroxide ion. This would give me two waters. Okay, that probably is more realistic about what it actually is happening. Okay, uh, so in this case, I note that I want to drop in these H pluses until each one of these H pluses matches the hydroxide. They're reacting in a one to one ratio. One of these for every one of these. On the side of my known unknown table, I put molarity, moles, and liters. These guys 
because they're acting in one-to-one -one ratios, they'll be exactly equal. Now, this is not the case for all titrations. If you have whatever coefficient you have here, one to two, two to one, one to three, one to five, that is the ratio which you'd be equal. This is your equal stoichiometrically. Um, so my known, let's start adding in some of my known things here. Um, the known is 0.1 molar. Now, if I want to get the moles of my known, that adding it in, I need two pieces of information. I need the molarity and I need the volume. From that, I'll get my known quantity of moles that I added. So I need the volume of my known. That will be registered from the burette. And the burette has just oodles of little lines on them. So it's a very accurate measuring dispensing device. From that, every time I run, well, not every time, when I run it in this fashion, I use, unless I'm using a computer or the pH meter, I use a start, finish, and then change. I use a delta sign for that. Now, for this, I'm looking for the absolute value amount dispensed. I don't care how much is in the beer before. I don't care how much is in the beer afterwards. I want to know how much was dispensed. So you will see that quite often burettes start the zero point top, meaning that zero is added. It doesn't matter what you have here. Just simply put down the, the level that you are starting at. It could be at five milliliters. Okay. And then when you're done dispensing, mark out the last thing. It could be, let's say, 25 milliliters. And this is that we'll use, that's what we'll use for this example. So I have a net change of 20 milliliters. That goes in the known. Now, this works off of liters. So maybe immediately you want to change this over to liters. And say 0 0.020 liters. All right, now what's happening on a particulate matter drawing here as you drop this in? Every time I drop an H plus in, it drops in, plop, gets in here, and it matches up with an, one of these um, hydroxides, and it goes through our neutralization process. This then cancels to form water, and I'm going to therefore just start dropping them in, and uh, I'll just draw a circle on them when they have been canceled or neutralized. So then I drop another one in, and it cancels this guy. And I drop another one, and it cancels. Now, you are seeing the picture, but in real life, you can't see this. Okay? So some way, we're going to have to use some, some method that we can actually track when the H pluses are equaling the hydroxides. And we'll talk about that momentarily. But at this point, we've matched them and it took 20 milliliters to match it. The unknown, we don't know this. This is what we're looking for. These moles are going to be equal, and the volume is measured beforehand. So this is the original volume, 0 0.020 liters. Now, at this point, without doing any math, it is extremely important to be able to do some proportional math here. Understand that very often on multiple choice problems of acid of uh, advanced placement tests, and there is no calculator. And you have to do on the fly proportional math. At this point, you should realize that if the moles are equal and you're in the same volume, then you must have the same concentration. If your moles are equal and you had less volume, let's just say hypothetically that we only added 10 milliliters. Then I'd have the same moles in a smaller volume. I must be more concentrated. In fact, I have half the volume. I have the same moles and half the volume, so I'm twice as concentrated. That would be this guy would be 0.2. If it was ended up being 40 milliliters, 0 0.040, that's the amount I took. That means I have the same amount of moles in twice the volume. I'd be 0 0.05 molar. So every time you look at this, you should be doing some proportional math to make sure you understand what it is that you're working with. Of course, if you have a calculator, you just figure it out. That's fine too. But on the flaw, you need to be able to look at how much you're adding. 
if you add it, this, if you add the same amount of volume as the volume that you started with, they have to be the same concentration. If they're close in volumes, they're co then then the concentrations are close. All right. So in this case, how would I solve for the unknown moles? I would take in this case point molarity equals moles per liter and I would take molarity times liters equals moles the molarity is 0.1 that was provided here the volume is 0 0.02 gives me a 0 0.002 moles this is 0 0.002 equal to 0 0.002 divide this out 0 0.002 divided by 0 0.02 and again you could set up another Molarity equals moles per liter, 0 0.002 divided by 0 0.02. Now keep in mind, uh, for purposes of an AP exam, this table, I don't know that anybody else uh, does this table, so this is just a data table. It is not a replacement for work, Okay, especially on an AP exam. 0 0.002 divided by 0 0.02, this means that my unknown concentration is... Point one, which we got from our calculation. Okay. Um, other than that, um, what can we do with this? Now, um, one, one more small little detail here. We know we titrate in our picture until they're equal. Okay. And for purposes of honors chemistry, we likely will just go for an end point of neutral. So we're looking for something that is neutral at the end. And you'll find as you go through more and more chemistry that the end point as you when the mo when the moles of your acid equal the moles of your base most people would say well then that should be neutral. But it's not always the case. For example, when you take an acid plus a base, you get a salt and water. Well, when you match the moles of this guy to equal the moles of this guy, then both of these guys are essentially down to zero. But you have your salt. So if your salt is neutral at this point, well then you would therefore be neutral. If your salt is basic at that point, then you would all you have left is the salt. Then you would be basic. And if your salt is acidic, then at that point you would be acidic. And we, we there is a at some point a video that would describe how do you know the pH of a salt. Uh, but at this point for honors chemistry we're just going to titrate till we're neutral. So you have two ways in which you can determine whether you're neutral. Meaning that your moles equal your moles. How do you know where it would be called the equivalence point? In this case one, you could use a pH meter. Um, likely, depending on the year, we may or may not use a pH meter. Two, easier option for us is to use a chemical indicator. This is a chemical that itself is not really acid, acidic, or basic, but changes color with different changes in pH. And the most common one that we will use is phenolphthalein. Phenolphthalein is clear in acids and it is pink in bases. Now it doesn't change exactly between, it's like 8.2 pH when it changes, but in this case um, we would um, could drop in a few drops of phenol failing indicator in this thing before we started. For this example, because it is an unknown at base, it would start pink and it would end clear. If you reverse the two around, it would start clear and, and pink. Now this video, I don't know, would be a complete replacement for a demonstration in class as to how to use it. There are, uh, I, maybe I'll add a little more detail into that.
but uh, at this point pretty much the, the guts of it is here you need to prepare your burette which means you have to rinse it and you'd have to demo you know maybe you know there could in the future be a video on that um, I always put the known in the burette that's not I don't know if that's actually standard across the industry but I do it that way um, couple other things I guess here we could add on what else can we do with a titration so what are the main questions we can answer with the titration well everything we're doing is is around moles so in this case I would like to determine a concentration an unknown concentration Concentration is moles per liter. So I would want, again, I destroyed the sample as we went along. I neutralized it. Pretty common. Lots of tests. But in this situation, I want the original moles in, divided by the original volume to give me my original concentration. That is something that is very important. So in my known unknown table and sometimes I'll write above it acid base just so I know which one's which I want my original moles divided by my original volume to give me my original concentration okay what else can I do with moles well another very common thing is molar mass this is the amount of mass per particle by mole so this is going to be grams per mole. So in this case, when I fill up my known unknown table, it's not as useful in this, in this situation, although sometimes you can still write it out. Okay, the known would be the molarity, the moles, and the volume. In this situation, I would be provide this would be gotten from the bottle or from the teacher, or this is the known entity. This be gathered off the burette, all right, and then which is our large tube. And then these are equal. So now I have my moles. And if I divide it by the volume, I could get the get the concentration, but I don't want that. What it means is that I started out with this burette, and I started out with a beaker below it, and I had a sample maybe of a solid acid, which is pretty common, all right. And I took this solid acid and I weighed it before I started. Then I dumped it in here, dissolved it maybe in some water. So now I know the grams of this substance. And I need to know the moles so I can divide the two to get a gram per mole. And for this situation, I would titrate to my equivalents. And then I'd have my moles of my unknown divide the moles, the grams, which I know already, by the original moles to get the grams per mole. That is a very common thing. Another thing that's fairly common is percent by mass, which is another form of composition, or you might even say concentration. Okay, in this sense, let's just say I do it again. I, percent by mass is mass divided by total mass. So again, we do this in a lab and where we take in some unknown sample and this unknown sample has lots of stuff in it, but it also has some iron in it, Fe. And I want to know, okay, how what's the percent mass of iron? If you're digging up iron ore and you want to know is this a good place to dig for exploring iron, you want to know percentage of iron in this thing. For this situation, um, you'd want to know percent mass. So I'd, I would measure right away the whole mass of, of the whole sample. Right there. So I would measure this out. Total mass. Then I would do a titration. And it wouldn't be an acid-base titration. But it would still be a titration. Known, unknown, molarity, moles, liters. And I'd have a known item, and I would have a known volume, and I'd have a moles going to another moles. Now, some cases we need an indicator or a pH meter. 
for acid base because acids and bases are clear. But in this situation, actually, we use a chemical that changes color on its own. So we just track its own color by visual sight. And either way, uh, now you have the moles of this guy. Moles divided by the, um, well, once you have the moles, for the, in this case, I just want to know the mass. So I would take the moles, all right, and I would just simply convert the moles to, of, in this case, Fe, to grams. One mole of Fe weighs 55.8 grams, and I'd have my grams of just iron, Fe. And then I could place that above and divide the two for a percent of the mass, equal free to multiply times 100, all right, and you get your percentage. That's the original moles of iron present in the sample, divided by the original mass of the sample, gives my original percent by mass. So here is just three examples of where we would use this different uh, ideas and lots of stuff here. Thank you very much.